Hello, I'm Sarah, and I'm a board certified behavior analyst. In ABA, we avoid the use of punishment based procedures. Punishment is widely understood to mean an unpleasant consequence to an undesired behavior, but what's the scientific definition? Before I dive into this, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And also, this video was brought to you by educationalheroes.com. This website provides access to a wide variety of digital download and educational curricula for students, teachers, and caregivers, all for a very affordable rate. This is a new service, so if you're one of the first 100 subscribers, you can use the discount code 25GETSTARTED25 for a 25% discount. If you or someone you know is an educator, definitely check out educationalheroes.com. Okay, back to talking about punishment. Punishment is an event that happens immediately after a behavior that decreases the future probability of that behavior or weakens the behavior. It comes in two forms, positive and negative punishment. Positive punishment entails adding something unpleasant or aversive to the learner's environment, such as yelling at them. Whereas negative punishment consists of removing something desirable, like removing the learner's privileges by grounding them. So why don't we use punishment in ABA? Well, the short answer is because of the code of ethics that BCBAs and RBTs are required to follow. More specifically, and as I'm sure you know, punishment comes with problems, and the Cooper book tells us all about that. Punishment can cause the learner to engage in aggressive behavior, either to escape the punishment or as a reflexive response to any physical pain produced by the punishment procedure. Punishment can result in escape or avoidance behavior, such as lying, cheating, shutting down, hiding, running away, or substance abuse. And these might pose a greater problem than the behavior that was originally being punished. And then there's behavioral contrast. In other words, Punishment might cause the behavior that you're punishing to actually increase outside of the circumstances in which the behavior was punished. Like for example, when the person doing the punishing isn't around. Also, when a person uses punishment on a learner, that might involve modeling certain behaviors that you don't want that learner to pick up on, like yelling or hitting. And finally, punishment might actually be more about the person doing the punishing than the person receiving the punishment. In essence, the person doing the punishing might just be trying to stop a behavior that's annoying them instead of trying to help and teach teach the person that they're punishing. So in parenting and education, what's the alternative to punishment? In ABA, we use positive reinforcement to increase and strengthen those behaviors that we do want to see, and we just make sure that the behaviors that we don't want to see don't receive reinforcement. It's more about simply withholding positive things in response to challenging behavior instead of making something unpleasant happen. I'll leave links in the description below to my videos about positive reinforcement and behavior change procedures for more information. If as a society, we can focus more on positive reinforcement of the behaviors that we do want to see, and less so on punishing the bad stuff, we might be able to avoid those side effects of punishment that I described. What are your thoughts on positive reinforcement versus punishment? Leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.